Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name is Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So today I have a fun little project. I'm going to be upcycling some magazine paper, a little bit of electrical wire, and an aluminum can to make this pretty little Christmas tree dragonfly ornament. For this project you're going to need some sort of paper cutter so you can slice the paper, a small dowel or I'm using an actual, I think it's a skewer for <laughs> hors d'oeuvres, You need some needle nose pliers, a little bit of E6000 glue, and a glue stick. You're going to want some scissors and some electrical pliers or wire strippers. I'm not sure the technical term for them. And I also found some uh, clothespins to be handy to hold on to some of this stuff. Uh, some of this stuff is optional, but I used some metallic dimensional paint on mine as well. And uh, if you want to stamp a little design in the wings, you need a little piece of cardboard and some push pins. You need some tape and also a Brillo pad. One note on the electrical wire, if you don't have any or you don't want to strip it or you don't have the wire strippers, you can use a 20 gauge wire that you can get at your craft stores. You can get it in um, different metallic colors, but because I had this and I like to reuse things that aren't uh, usable, I'm gonna be using my copper wire in my electrical wire. The first step here is we're going to be using the magazine paper to make the little paper beads to make the body and the head of our dragonfly. So you want to select some papers that have some pretty color to them and you're going to want to make sure that you get papers that have color all the way to the edge of the paper. You need about an inch of color and that's it. So. Um, Look around on your papers. I think this is bottom piece here of grass is going to make sort of a pretty color. This again here is a nice pink um, shades that'll work. So if you look through your papers, you can find a lot of different colors that will make some really pretty beads for your dragonflies. I'm going to start with this piece of paper. It takes one full page to make all the beads that you need for the dragonflies. And I think that this distance is going to be enough because you just need a final wrap around the end of the bead to get the color. So I'm going to test this out. I think you need about an inch. Maybe you need a little bit more. But I think this will make sort of a fun red uh, dragonfly body. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to cut quarter inch strips of paper. So you are going to want some easy cutting system. And I'm using three strips for each bead. So I need seven beads for the body. So I need a total of 21 strips. So I've got my 21 quarter inch strips cut and I have them grouped in pairs of three, kind of with the uh, color that I'm going to use for the bead all facing the right or the same direction. And now I'm going to cut the last strips to make the larger bead for the head. So I want to cut half inch strips instead of quarter inch strips and I'm going to do three of those. And then I'm going to do one quarter inch strip. And 
and one strip that is a quarter inch at the top and that tapers down to about half of that width. Not quite to a point, but um, so that it narrows just a little bit on the way down. So there's just a little bit of a taper to it. For this next step, I need my uh, glue stick and my skewer, and I think this is about an eighth of an inch, maybe three, 30 seconds um, in a dimension. It does need to be fairly large because you need to get, in some cases, you need to get three um, strands of wire through the bead. So you want a fairly big hole. So to start, I'm gonna make my head bead, and I'm just gonna select out of my half inch strips, the one that has the most red just to be sure that I'm wrapping it. So I want this to be my end piece. So I'm gonna start with the other two and I can just glue them together with about a half or about an inch overlap. So this will be the top where I'm gonna start rolling. And this will be the end. So I want this red piece at the end. So I'm gonna attach my blue end here. And then I'm gonna take my quarter inch strip. And again, I want the red to be at the end. So I'm gonna attach the blue end. I'm gonna just center it in the middle of the half inch piece. And then I'll take my tapered piece, and it is gonna be a little blue, which will be interesting. It'll be sort of a fun end here. So I'm gonna attach the two quarter inch pieces together. And then I'll just start at this end and roll it fairly tightly around my skewer. You don't want it super tight because you want to be able to slide it off. And if you need to, you can kind of push the edges in with your thumbs to keep the edges of the bead flatter. So I've made it to the end of my half inch pieces. I just wanna line everything back up. So the edges are even. And then I don't want this part to slip around, I want it to stay in the middle. So I'm gonna add a little glue. And as I roll it, I'm gonna make sure that this quarter inch piece stays in the middle of the bead. It doesn't need glue on all of, on the whole strip, but you do want to add glue periodically just to keep the layers from slipping apart. And then you can push it off with your thumb. Kind of twist this out because you don't want to pull the coil in from uh, out from the inside of the bead. So just make sure you're holding all of that in place. And then to finish off the ends of the beads, you can just add a little bit of the glue stick just to kind of hold those edges in so your bead doesn't slide apart. And then I'm just gonna set it aside to dry and work on the other beads. 
So for this, I'm gonna use exactly the same process. I just wanna make sure that I select my end piece. So there's a lot of red on this piece, so I'm gonna use that last. And I'm just gonna take my other two pieces and glue them together with about a half or an inch overlap. Make sure the last part of my, or the paper that I want to show is at the end here. And then I'll just roll up the bead and finish off the ed edges with some more of the glue stick until I have my seven beads rolled. So I've got all my beads finished here, and now I'm gonna switch gears to cutting and stripping the wire. If you're using the 20 gauge craft wire, you can just skip this section and cut uh, two pieces that are 10 inches long and another piece that is 20 inches long. Uh, and I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on how to strip this wire, but I will cut one 20 inch piece because there are actually three uh, wires inside here. So it takes a little time to strip these wires and I have found that it's helpful to have the needle nose pliers and the wire strippers to hold on to it because it can be a little hard to hold on to to pull the plastic off. So for this first layer, you just want to carefully loosen this outer plastic shell. And once you've got it loose, you can pull it off. I wouldn't recommend trying to do pieces bigger than about an inch and a half to two inches because it is hard to get a hold of and pull off. But like I said, I don't like to, I've broken the inside wires trying to pull off this outer shell with the wire strippers, so I've switched to just kind of carefully pulling it off with my hands. But just to show you, you get a really, there's three wires here, and you do get a really pretty copper wire when you strip all of the plastic off. So I'm going to work on that for a little bit and I'll be back. So I've got my three pieces of uh, copper wire now and I only need two of them so I'm going to set one of them aside. So they're 20 inches long so I need one 20 inch piece and I need two 10 inch pieces. So I'm just going to cut one of these in half here with my needle nose pliers. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to start with one 10 inch piece and my large bead that I'm using for the head of the dragonfly. Then I also need two little decorative beads. So what I want to do is I want to slide one of these little round decorative beads on here as well. And this, then I'm going to make a little coil because this part is going to be for the little antenna. And I want to you know, you can make them any length you want. You need to leave the majority of your wire down here, but you can make fairly long little antennae. So I'm gonna fold that up like that. So I'm gonna take my other 10 inch piece and slide my other small decorative bead on there. And I'll go ahead and coil this end as well to make the other antenna. So I wanna coil it similar to the other piece. Thank you. 
And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to slide it through from the other direction. Flatten this out a little so it'll go through there. So I'm going to put it in the opposite way. I guess I should have done this first. I'm going to bend this longer piece down. So then I'll put this through. And I want to make this antenna about the same length as the other one. Bend it up like that, and then I'm going to bend the longer piece down like that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to just cross these pieces all the way over so that they're sort of perpendicular to the way that they were. And then I'm going to take my 20 inch piece and feed it through just the large bead. And I want it, I want to fold it basically in half, so I'm gonna just get it in there and pull it in sort of a half. And then I'm gonna cross these pieces across the bead as well. Now hopefully they're meeting roughly in the middle. I always have a little difficulty getting these this centered on the bead, but kind of got it crisscrossed here. And I want to go ahead and just twist it a couple of times, and this will make the neck. So I'm going to twist all four wires about one and a half or two turns. So that I've secured all the wire and then I want to pull my short pieces down to the middle and I'll take my long pieces out to the side. So I've got it like this. And then I'm going to take my first of my seven beads and slide it on these two pieces here. And then I'm just going to take one of the side wires and fold it down the side. And I'm going to go over the flat pieces of the short pieces of wire. And I'll take this other side fold it down the side of the bead, and I'm going to go under the two short pieces of wire. So in one case I've gone over and in one case I'm going under. So I'll take my next bead, slide it on there, and this piece was over the top last time so I'm going to fold it down and take it under the wires. And I'll fold this one down and take it over the top of the two wires. And I'll just continue on until I have all seven beads on, alternating going over the top or the bottom of the wire. And once I have all seven beads on, I'm going to take these two longer pieces that are going around the outside and I'm just going to twist them around the two shorter pieces a couple of times to secure them. And then I, you can trim off the ends if you want to. These pieces are a little bit long so I might cut them a little shorter. And then I'm just going to curl them up the same way I did the antenna. I like to have the longer little swirly pieces in the middle and the shorter ones on the outside. And I like to use all the wire, I don't really usually trim it off, so I'm just going to roll these up to finish off the tail. So 
So that finishes off the body of the dragonfly and now we're going to move on to the wings. To make the wings you're going to need a wing template and I just traced mine out very simply using one of my kitchen knives. So I just traced around the shape, kind of lined it up and made my template. If You can certainly draw them freehand if you want to make them a different shape, but you do want two that can kind of cross over um, like this. And you're also going to need your aluminum can. There's a couple of comments I have for the aluminum can. You can certainly incorporate the print into your wings if you want to. Um, if you want to make an all silver wing on both sides, you can use the Brillo pad and a little bit of elbow grease to get the print off of most cans. So you can certainly spend a little time scrubbing down to get to two silver sides if you want to use that as your um, for your wings. And if you look around, you can sometimes find cans that don't actually have print. They just have a plastic wrapper. And in that case, you can get down to the silver really quickly. So it's kind of up to you how you want to design the wings, but you, once you have your can uh, prepared, you just need to go ahead and tape the wings onto the can. And I've found that my style, I can get about four uh, wings, so two pairs of wings on one can. I think it's easier to cut them out, to tape them on and cut them out before you cut the can, so that is what I'm going to do. You could certainly cut the can apart and then tape the wings on if you wanted to, uh, but if you tape the whole area, you can cut around the template without the template moving. So I've got my template taped onto my can, and I'm just going to use a kitchen knife to cut the top off, and then I'll use my scissors to cut uh, out the template shape itself and I'm, I just have a piece of paper towel here because <laughs> there's always water left in the can no matter what you do. So you just want to carefully cut this out because the edges are going to be a little bit sharp. So once you've got the wings cut out, they're very easy to manipulate and flatten out, which is another reason why I just like to cut the templates out on the rounded can so I don't have to worry about flattening a bigger piece. There's, these are small enough that they flatten out really easily. And I like to add a little design to the wings, like I said. You, you could set up a template for yourself, but I just kind of free form it with a small uh, push pin and some cardboard. One thing I will mention is that there's kind of a shiny side and a duller side and you probably just want to make sure that you're making sure that you have both pieces going the same direction. And then I do kind of try to match my design by lining up the wings as I'm working on them. But like I said, I like to just kind of free form it. To assemble my wings, I'm going to do two little triangular notches in the middle of the wings. So I want to do one on the bottom side and one on the top side, and then I'll use a little bit of E6000 glue to hold them together. So I'm just going to cut a little V-shaped notch in the center here. And then I want to cut it on the top of this piece. So that they kind of fit together like that. 
And then I'll use some glue just to secure the pieces together right here at the joint. So while my glue is drying, I'm going to go ahead and add, I can bend these back wings out just a little bit to get to them, and I'm going to go ahead and add the edging with my silver metallic paint. So once the paint and the glue are dry, you're ready, we're ready to assemble the two pieces together. And to do that, I, you need three pieces of wire that are six inches long. And I'm just going to fold all of them sort of in half around my finger so they are more of a hairpin shape. And then I want to take the first hairpin and I'm going to weave it through the top bottom part of the first bead and down across to the other side of the second bead. And then I'm going to take the second one and just go opposite of that so they kind of crisscross each other. So I'm going to go from the bottom of this bead on the side on the other side of the two wires that go through the beads and across on the other side of the top bead. So I've kind of made an X shape at the top here. And for the last little hairpin curve, I want to go just from between these two beads. So I'm going to go on the bottom of one side and the top of the other so that it crosses this top wire that's... So I'm going to feed it in here. And then I want to go... Whoops. So I'm going to feed it in here and the other side will go across down on the other side. So I've got all my legs woven through. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use the top two legs to hold the wings on. So I'm going to push these two out of the way. I'm going to lay my wings across here. Make sure one's on the bottom, and or two are on the bottom and two are on the top. And then I'm just going to pull them to the center of the wings. Kind of flatten them down so they're tight to each other. And then I'm just going to twist all of them together a couple of turns. And then I want to take the last two pairs and twist them together as well. A couple of turns. And then I'm going to separate out my front legs from my middle legs. And just pull apart two pairs of legs. And you can bend the legs any way you want. I like to just do kind of a little square corner. So I've got my six little legs here and then I'll just use my needle nose pliers to trim down the length of all of them and to curl up the wires to make the feet.
So for the finishing touches, I like to give a little bit of a curve up to the tail. So I'm just going to bend this up a little ways. And if you want to, you can kind of reshape the wings, give them a little bit of a lift or a curl at the tip. And I like to have my little antennae pointing out, so I'm going to bend those or twist them out and then I'll give them a little bit of a curl. And then you can add uh, some string or a wire hook to make a little hanger right here in the center where that X piece is to hang it up for a Christmas decoration. Or you can just have them sitting out places. They can sit back or stand up. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's project, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section, and I hope to see you soon back here in the lab.